Hey friends, my name is Claire Jenks and today me and my buddy here are gonna make a mountain bike manual trainer for under $30. Let's get started. Here's a sneak peek at the finished manual trainer in all its glory. But before we get started, I have a confession to make. Though this is my first ever mountain bike build video, it's not my first build. For example, this is the school bus my partner and I converted and traveled in for three years. But it's been a while. In this video, I really owe credit to the Kyle and April manual build for much of the design. I ended up trying a few different versions, but with a couple of tweaks, theirs worked the best. Let's check out the supplies we'll need. Here are the tools that we'll definitely need for the build. These ones are optional, but nice to have. Don't worry, I'll provide a full supply and cut list in the description below. You'll also need a cutting implement and an eight foot long two by six and two by four. I love mountain bikes. Let's make our chop saw cuts first. The 2x6 gets cut into a 48 inch, 20 inch, 18 inch, and two 4 inch pieces. The 2x4 cuts are 24 inch, 18 inch, and a 6 inch piece. Let's roughly assemble the trainer so we can see where all the pieces will go. The longest 48 inch 2x6 piece is the trainer base, while the second longest 20 inch piece is the cross beam support that keeps the trainer from rocking from side to side. On to the build! Let's attach the upright beam to the bottom support. Trace the outline of the board so that you'll know exactly where to put the screws. I like to pre-drill all of my holes so that screws go in cleanly, but it is optional. I won't always show the pre-drill, but just know that it's happening before the screws go in. Start two screws into the bottom of the support board and screw them into the upright board. Next, we'll add the 24-inch uprights. I like to line one up and then use a second scrap board to align it with the outside edge of the bottom 2x6. This will ensure they stay in place and that your tire will fit between them. I'm putting two screws into the upright on each side so that the 2x4 is secure and then two more into the bottom of the support as I again line up the 2x4 with the edge of the support board. With that done, let's check our work by seeing if our tire fits. This tire is a 2.6 inch tire, which is the biggest that will fit into this trainer. Like a glove. Let's move on to the base of our crossbeam. These are two four inch two by six pieces. I highly recommend pre-drilling these pieces as short ends like this tend to split without doing so. Let's put four screws into each side and call it a day. We're going to measure the upright and the crossbeam to find and align the centers of both. Once they're centered, add a screw to hold it in place. I did it on the top, but you can do it on the bottom to hide the screw hole. Flip the whole thing upside down and get out your Forstner or spade bit. These little guys will help counter sink your bolt heads so that the manual trainer can sit flat. Notice I'm only going three quarters of an inch or so deep. Now let's switch to a normal half inch bit and drill all of the way through so that our bolts will fit in. Note, feel free to completely skip the bolt drilling process and opt to use screws to attach the base and the crossbeam. I'm using bolts for easy disassembly and storage. Let's add our bolts in and flip the contraption right side up. We'll remove our placeholder screw and add in the washers and nuts. Next up are the braces. I recommend putting your bike into the stand to make sure that the braces won't contact your derailleur. Once you've temporarily screwed on one of the braces, let's scribe the angle you'll need, likely 140 degree and 150 degree angle. Don't worry, this is on the cut list in the description below. 
untack the brace and let's head back to the chop saw. Pro tip, once the first brace is cut, you can put it on top of the second piece and scribe the exact angle you need. Cut this and let's head back to the trainer. I'm double checking my screw placement and adding two screws to each board. Next, I'm pre-drilling and then screwing down the bottom part of each brace. With that done, we'll switch to a slightly bigger bit and pre-drill a hole about an inch and a half from the end of the support beam. Let's screw in the O-ring. We're so close to finishing. I'm using an extra load-bearing carabiner and a cargo strap that I had lying around but it could be as simple as a cut up tire tube. You just need something that won't damage your bike frame while it keeps you from going backward during your manual. Next up, reducing slippage. Let's keep the trainer from scooting backwards. Grab an old tire and carefully cut off a few chunks. We'll staple these to the bottom of the trainer. in any stubborn staples with a hammer. Success! But last but not least, keeping the tire in place. There are a couple of ways to do this. Number one is taking that last six inch two x four and screwing it onto the end. Add a free floating wooden piece or two, depending on your tire size. The second way is more elegant. We'll measure 23 and a quarter inches from the end beam and mark a hole. Then measure and mark one and a half inches and repeat. Mark and drill out these holes on both sides and make sure the bolt fits smoothly through. These are your 29 inch, 27 5, and 26 inch wheel sizes. Hook up your bike and you're off to the races! You could stop here, but I went ahead and did a few upgrades to my trainer just to see what I could produce. Using a circular sander and some 150 grit paper, I smoothed out the surfaces I could reach and then removed the hardware in order to soften some of the hard edges. After sanding, I did a quick sweep for dust and then got out some dual deck stain and varnish. I brushed a light coat onto all the surfaces and then let it sit for 24 hours to cure. Here's our finished manual trainer. Hit like and subscribe to show your support. Thanks for joining me in the mountain bike wood shop today. I'm Claire Jinks and I'll see you out on the trails.